SpaceX is gearing up for the upcoming Starship flight, with a primary focus on the orbital launch pad, OLP. Booster 10 and Ship 28 are set to make their way back to the launch site within the next week or two, paving the way for a wet dress rehearsal, WDR, that will precede the third launch of the world's largest and most potent rocket, anticipated wet dress rehearsal. Both Ship 28 and Booster 10 are expected to return to the pad next week at the earliest, allowing SpaceX to stick to their schedule of having the vehicle ready by the end of January. Ship 28 was recently relocated from the turntable to a transport stand. Once both vehicles are back at the pad, SpaceX plans to conduct a WDR, similar to the last two flights. This rehearsal is crucial due to upgrades and changes made to the orbital tank farm. OTF since the second flight. SpaceX has enhanced the OTF with additional pumps and subcoolers, and modifications to plumbing have separated ship subcoolers from booster ones, improving fueling efficiency. Modifications to the orbital tank farm and launch site. Following the rollback of booster 10 and ship 28, SpaceX began dismantling the old water tank and a repurposed methane tank. The old water tank, unused for some time due to leaks, was abandoned. It lacked additional reinforcement, unlike other cryo shells used in cryo tanks. Repurposed methane tanks took on the role of the water tank, supporting heat exchangers in the cryo bunker. These heat exchangers likely aid in heating up liquid nitrogen, used to purge and pressurize cryo lines. SpaceX is reinforcing the liquid nitrogen tank and the remaining water tank with large vertical I-beams and cross supports exposed to the exhaust plume. These additions aim to strengthen the cryo shell during static fires and launches, compensating for damage to removed cryo shells caused by engine firings. Over recent weeks, SpaceX has implemented small upgrades throughout the OLP, including replacing HESCO barriers with a concrete wall for better protection against erosion from engine firings. The ship quick disconnect arm was repainted and various burn plates on the orbital launch mount OLM ring were replaced, particularly those near the booster quick disconnect. SpaceX is taking this opportunity to address damage from Flight 1, such as repairing welds inside the OLM. The LR-11000 crane has been disassembled, though it's unclear if this is for maintenance or relocation. Tower 2 and Sanchez. SpaceX is assembling Tower 2 at Sanchez, with a section for the top holding pulleys arriving recently. The purpose and location of Tower 2 remain uncertain, though it may serve as a launch tower, as mentioned by Starbase General Manager Catherine Luters in a previous meeting. SpaceX is also working on the second booster transport stand and shipwork stand for the ship bay. Once complete, attention will shift to the third transport stand and work stand. Ship 26, on the engine install stand since Jan 10, is receiving additional stringers for the payload section. Production site, Star Factory. Progress is notable. With the new high bay ship bay nearing completion, roof installation is nearly finished, and internal work, including lighting and elevator installation, is ongoing. Star Factory continues to expand with preparations for the final section where Tent 3 was located. Massey's following cryo-testing of Ship 30 and Booster 12, SpaceX is constructing a potential flame trench and static fire stand for ships at Massey's. Approval for static fire testing at Massey's is uncertain, but paperwork may be underway. Cryogenic pumps, subcoolers, and extra tanks have been installed to support the static fire stand. Vehicle updates, vehicles for Flight 4, Ship 29 and Booster 11 are on respective work stands preparing for static fires and flights. Flight 5's vehicles, Ship 30 and Booster 12, have completed CREO with Booster 12 not on a work stand after a recent rollback. Ship 30 awaits the installation of the next stand in the ship bay. Booster 13's methane tank completion marks a significant milestone for Flight 6, with nearly four flight-capable boosters ready. As for version 2 parts, glimpses inside Star Factory suggest progress, but it remains uncertain when components will emerge. The second tower's construction 
and the appearance of version 2 of Starship outside the factory are eagerly awaited.